How can you build a side hustle to make you $1,000 per month with automated trading? Is it possible? In today's video, I'm going to show you how to do it. Now, I want to get this straight. For most of you watching, automated trading is not a full-time job. Instead, treat it like a part-time job. That way, you're risking less and you have more time to master your craft. Do not quit your job to trade full-time. That would be dumb. But you can use this side hustle for extra income on top of your job. First and foremost, let's talk about requirements. You're going to need money to get this side hustle going. And I don't want you to use all your money. It should be only money allocated to the side hustle, right? So if you need this money to pay rent or to pay groceries, do not do the side hustle, save up more. So once you have a set of cash for the side hustle, you have to have the expectation that you're going to lose it all. Okay. That way, if you have that expectation and you make money, you're pleasantly surprised. And if you lose it all, then it won't hurt you financially. Now, the chances of losing it all should be low with diversified strategies, but having that mindset is going to help you succeed in the future. So you're going to need about $10,000 to get started. I know that may seem like quite a bit of money for most people, but to truly hit this goal of $1,000 a month in profit, you're going to need some starting capital. And $10,000 is a minimum. If you have more, if you have $15,000 or $20,000, that would be better and would be easier to hit your goal. But I truly think you can start with $10,000. Now, you're probably saying, Hey, Jacob, for me to make a thousand a month, I need to return 10% on my 10,000 to hit that goal, right? Per month, that's unrealistic. And I would agree, right? Trading is lumpy. You're going to have good months and bad months. I've had many months where I've done 10% and more, you know, 20, 30% in months. But to do that consecutively, you know, 10% for three months, four months in a row is unrealistic. And I would agree for sure to hit this goal immediately is going to be tough. But if you think about the long term over two to three years and you averaged out your profits, I truly think you can hit this goal if you follow these steps and build good diversified strategies correctly and make sure they're uncorrelated. Now, the next step is to set up your software and a brokerage account. Personally, I use NinjaTrader and there'll be a link in the description to run and build my automated trading systems. And I use interactive brokers um, to you know store my money and actually submit trades on the exchange. Okay, I definitely recommend using an existing platform like NinjaTrader, TradeStation, QuantConnect, because it's going to save you a lot of headaches. Building it from scratch, there's a lot more bugs, a lot more errors that can happen. Use an existing platform. Don't reinvent the wheel. And choose a good brokerage as well that's trustworthy. Uh, Interactive Brokers is great. There's also a link in the description for Interactive Brokers. Now, primarily, I trade futures. And what's great about futures is you get built-in leverage with their instruments, right? What that means is you front up a little bit of cash and you can trade with more cash. There's pros and cons to that. You can make more money with little amount of cash, but you can also lose a lot more. So you need to be careful with futures. I think you can hit this goal of 1000 per month on $10,000 because of that built in leverage, but you have to do it right. You have to build strategies correctly and really understand how they're going to work. So let's talk about that. So to hit our goal of a thousand per month, we're not going to do it with one strategy, right? There's no strategy out there. That's consistently going to help us hit that goal without risking quite a bit of money. We're going to need multiple strategies. So let's set a simple goal of creating three different strategies and these different strategies will trade different markets on different time frames for example we'll build a strategy for the s p 500 futures or the symbol is yes we'll build a strategy for canadian dollar futures uh, that symbol is 6c and we'll build a strategy for the 10-year bond note which is zn so all these three strategies trade different markets, right? And that way you're getting diversified, uncorrelated systems. Okay. Now you, I'm just picking these symbols randomly. You could choose other symbols. You could trade oil, gold, or whatever it may be, build strategies for those. I was just picking those three just for an example, right? The goal is to build multiple strategies to reach our goal of a thousand dollars per month. Okay. okay. So the next step is we're actually going to need trading strategies to make this a thousand dollars per month. When I say trading strategy, we're going to have basically a set of code in our platform like Ninja Trader to buy and sell different instruments and assets to make a return in the market, right? Buy low, sell high or short the market where we bet that it's going to go lower. We short it and cover at a lower price. OK, so we're going to need multiple strategies to hit this a thousand dollars per month, right? It might take three or four strategies, maybe five, maybe 10 strategies to reach that goal, right? We want to be diversified, uncorrelated. We don't want to put all our eggs into one basket. So we need multiple strategies, right? Maybe your strategies consist of a gold swing strategy, a oil short strategy and a S&P 500 or ES futures mean reversion strategy, right? So those would be three examples of uncorrelated strategies, right? They're trading different markets, right? We have a gold, oil, 
and ES, which is S&P 500 futures. So they're uncorrelated, right? Those, those assets usually don't correlate with each other in the long term. They might correlate with each other on the day or on the week, but over the long term, they don't. And that way we get diversification, right? We get that uncorrelation and we're not losing on all strategies all the time. Okay. So that would be an example of three strategies. Maybe you want to make more, maybe you want to make five or six to reach that goal of a thousand per month. What I'm trying to say is that we're going to need multiple strategies to reach this goal. Okay. So that's great. But how do we build these strategies? So for example, in NinjaTrader, which is the platform I use, I test strategies. I think of an idea and then I test it for about two years. So for example, let's take gold, right? Basically what I'm going to do with gold is take that instrument and start running tests with it, right? What if we bought gold on Mondays and sold on Fridays? What if we bought when the RSI crosses above 30 and you know goes against 70? How does it perform in those two years, right? And I usually do more complex ideas than that, but those are very simple examples. But basically I'm going to test different ideas with these symbols to make my three strategies, right? And that takes time, right? To build a strategy or to even test a strategy over two years to make it robust enough is hard, right? You're going to have maybe 10 ideas for gold and maybe only one of them is good and nine of them fail. They don't make money over those two years. But basically, I'm going to test an idea for each of those symbols for two years. And I like to randomize it, right? Maybe for gold, I test from 2018 to 2020. For oil, I test maybe 2010 to 2012. And for ES, maybe 2015 to 2017. But I'll create ideas for each strategy, maybe write them down in my notes, in a, in a Word document, each idea, and then back test them in the NinjaTrader platform. Now with back testing, basically I'm taking my idea and putting buy or sell signals and it's going to spit out the profit, right? How well did that gold strategy do over those two years? What was the net profit? What was the risk? What was the max drawdown? And it's going to give me all those numbers. And once those numbers um, are somewhat good, like basically reaching my goal of a thousand per month, I'm going to then test that strategy for a longer time frame, right? Instead of two years, how well did it do the last 10 years or 12 years or 14 years, right? And I'm looking for better performance. So say in two years, that gold strategy made $3,000 in profit. That's great. But in the last 10 years, it actually lost $6,000. If that happens, that strategy is bad. And I have to think of a new idea. So once again, to summarize, I test with two years, right? So say for gold 2020 to 2022, I test for two years. I test all these ideas, SMA crossovers, RSI cross above 30, buy on Monday, sell on Friday. Once again, those are very simple examples. But if it makes money in those two years, it makes it say it makes $3,000, then I'm going to test it from like 2010 to 2022 or 2008 to 2022 and look for the performance to increase, right? It's got to be more than $3,000 from those two years because that means, you know, if it's able to perform better with more data, that strategy's robust. And what you'll find a lot is you'll test for two years and then test for 10 or 12 years and the, perform the performance is worse. It loses money. And that's a bad sign. That means your strategy probably isn't robust and you think need to think of a new idea. Now, you're going to keep repeating that process of testing every two years for all those symbols until you get something that's good. And then once you increase that from and start date, say from 2008 to 2022, and you see that increase in performance for all those three symbols, now you have a good portfolio, a starting portfolio to reach this goal. The next step would be to run it in a paper or SIM account for about three to six months. Basically, see how your strategies are performing with the current market, okay? Are they making money or are they losing money? Now, by running in paper or simulation money, you're not risking your own capital and you're able to analyze and understand how the strategies are performing. If there's any bugs with your strategy, sometimes there's you know technical errors that you need to fix and you're reducing your risk because you're not, you're not trading with real money. So I would say for three to six months, test it in a SIM or paper account. Then after those three to six months, if they're up or if they're somewhat making money, then you start running them live with a minimal size, right? For example, maybe you want to trade one micro contract for each of those strategies to get started and that will use a lot less capital. And then you up the quantity until you're reaching your goal of a thousand per month. In NinjaTrader, there's actually a metric for profit per month. And that's something you can use to look at to reach your goal, right? It'll tell you when you back test or run a strategy live, what's the average profit per month. And maybe you keep upping the size until you reach that goal or you modify the strategy to kind of reach that goal when you back test it and run it live. Okay. So basically run it in a paper simulation account for three to six months. Once it starts making money, then start trading with real money with the minimal size possible and then up the size once you feel more comfortable. This is going to allow you to gradually get into the feel of what it's like to trade with real money and the risk associated with that 
and the returns as well, okay? One bonus I wanted to mention is make sure you include slippage and commission when you're doing your testing, right? Slippage is usually the amount of ticks when you submit an order that is offset from the actual price. For example, if you submit a market order for one ES contract with real money, and say ES is printing 4,000, right? That means like right now the contracts are trading for 4,000. Usually you don't get filled at 4,000. It's usually a little bit worse. Maybe it's 4,000.25 or 4,000.50, one or two ticks off. Usually you wanna include slippage when you're running your back testing and commission as well. If you're trading futures or usually any derivative like options, you're trading, you're, you're paying for commissions, right? Every trade you're paying a dollar or two dollars, make sure you include that as well. There'll be links in the description and in the comments on how to include slippage and commission in your back testing. But those are really important to make sure your back testing is somewhat accurate or more accurate uh, of what it's like to trade in real time. Because when you trade real time, there's always gonna be slippage and there's always gonna be commission, you know, except for stocks, of course, but Basically, there's always going to be slippage. So make sure you include those in your back testing. I truly think if you put all these steps into place, you can reach a goal of hitting a thousand per month in net profit. And once again, it's a goal. You're not going to hit it every month. You know, I don't hit it every month. That's for sure. Cause you're going to have good months and bad months, but saying that goal is going to, you know, direct you and, and discipline you to work harder, build great trading systems, make sure they're diversified and put in the work to reach this goal. And I truly think you'll be able to hit a thousand per month and maybe even two months, three months in a row. And if you average out your profits over the next, you know, two to three years, I think it would average to 1000 per month if you follow these steps. So anyways, if you found value in this video, let me know in the comments below and hit a like and please subscribe. I'm looking forward to, you know, making more videos like this where I show you kind of how to build strategies and how to do them well. So anyways, that's the video, guys. Have a good week. We'll see you next time.